The third dimension. Little Girl Lost is a rather memorable tale among the Zone fans. It's far from perfection, yet its mere premise left a distinct impact upon audiences, opened up whole new sci-fi concepts for future creators, and gave us what would be a pure Twilight Zone terror. It took a few episodes, but it finally happened. We actually got a Twilight Zone tale, which introduced us to alternate dimensions, we got portal jumping! Yes, for reals, this Twilight Zone episode is highly praised because it showed American audiences the concept of alternate dimensions, cosmic portals, and other planes of existence. These are commonplace ideas now, but this precise epic is considered one of the founding fathers of these tropes and ideas because it acts as an entryway to sci-fi by taking you into its slow. Slowly. Little Girl Lost is a revolutionary mother for what we could do with fiction, influencing many. That alone is an astounding accomplishment, and I do respect it so much for paving the way for future stories thanks to its imagination. Good job. Ugh. Sadly, it's another tale which I do like, but I don't fully love as a platinum trophy. RAPE MY CHILDHOOD, WILL YOU, YOU OLD GUY? YOU AND I- I know, I know, it's a fondly idolized classic, which totally shows off the greatness of the series. But alas, the basic plot itself is nothing too special. We follow two parents, the Miller family, who are living their normal everyday lives until one night, their daughter suddenly disappears without a trace. However, the Millers are awakened by their little girl's cries for help as she claims to still be nearby, yet the couple can't seem to find her anywhere. The Millers are unable to solve this mystery, so they summon their physicist friend Bill, since only he knows what to do. Bill by the science guy. Bill's a brilliant scientist who scans the house and discovers the horrific conflict. The girl is still in the house, but not in their realm. Her room has a portal to another universe, and she's been sucked inside? The third dimension. The little girl is lost in an alternate plane of existence, and they must retrieve her before the portal closes off. Already, this is a pretty ingenious setup, full of so much creativity, abstract concepts, and of course, cosmic horror. I know this idea seems a bit played out today, but just think, this was the first time ever American viewers were shown the concept of portals, alternate dimensions, and alien universes. We see this all the time now, even in kids shows, but without this episode, we never would have gotten such awe-inspiring cosmic horror and fun thanks to it. This episode had such a masterful concept that, like many Twilight Zone fables, it went on to inspire big projects we adore. The idea of losing a person to a mysterious portal was actually used and paid homage to by the Phantasm, Poltergeist, and of course that radical Simpsons Treehouse of Horror episode, when Homer becomes 3D. Oh, heavenly testament to the eternal majesty of God's creation. Holy macaroni! Yeah, if you ever doubt the epicness of the Twilight Zone, just know that this filler arc gave us so many amazing stories like those. The acting in this is also quite good. Bill Nye the Science Guy delivers such a decent Star Trek level performance. He truly does sound like a man who knows what he's talking about, and totally sells you on all the greater scope of terror humanity cannot comprehend. End. Although all the lines forming the fourth dimension are perpendicular to every They're point. not necessarily parallel to us. But if enough of the lines are parallel, then you might create an opening. Junctures between dimensions are freaks of nature. Enough of your borax, Poindexter! We need action! 
that, you lousy dimension! The Miller parents are no slouch either. Despite being the token normies, you do feel the pain and fear they go through. Worried about where the heck their daughter is, or if she's okay. Something I will warn you about, though, is Little Girl Lost is a different type of horror. In most modern stories, the portal world would be the main focus. However, the episode instead focuses on the terror from the outside parent's perspective. We're supposed to feel the horror of losing a family member or a loved one to forces we can't comprehend, and the terror all revolves around how they don't know what their girl is going through trapped on the other side. As far as they know, this poor soul is trapped in in a scary void with no hope of ever escaping. I can't imagine how that feels. <laughs> The alternate dimension is built up to, and not shown until the finale. It's mostly a metric ton of exposition and character interactions, up until they actually do something. <laughs> The largest issue your grumpy cat holds against this episode is that it's another one with so many slow, dragged out, boring scenes before we savor the juicy meat. This is another dialogue-heavy Twilight Zone short. The characters exchange banter and long-winded exposition forever. I mean no exaggeration when I tell you that more than 80% of this dang plot is Bill Nye our science guy, giving long monologues and speeches, explaining away the plot for us. It mainly feels like a science lecture at times, whenever the little girl isn't crying for aid. This episode spends a bit too much time elaborating on the sci-fi concepts, and explaining away everything for you, the audience, over action. Now, don't get me wrong, I understand that exposition is vital for many stories, and is not not a bad thing. However, this arc does not do a riveting job at making it cool. In many stories, exposition and plot points can be detailed in fun, artistic ways. That way, you can get your big elements across, but also keep the crowd entertained. This is why I kind of enjoy opening narration and visuals, since it grants us the deets while also amusing you with cool imagery. You know how to do bad exposition? Just have the characters awkwardly stand around and talking. Talking for minutes on end and basically tell you everything more than show. Bill just stands around for numerous scenes and lectures you on all the exposition and it gets dull. I mean, who wants to watch some dork stand still babbling on for hours? Crazy, eh? My point is, the episode is sluggish whenever Bill narrates everything when some action and minor visuals could help. But that's genuinely the sole con I have. It's a tad boring as they science around and lecture you on what's going on here, but it does pick up super quickly. The dog walks into the portal, but never comes back. Luckily, it allows them to mark the portal, realizing that we need action. Mr. Miller dives in to save the day and find them, where we at least see the scary dimension. And this is is where things get trippy. Here, honey. Let's get stoned. I need to get all popped up on dope. <laughs> Even I'll confess, the effects here are so stunning. The portal already felt creepy without Make Solids Vanish, but the dimension itself is beyond quirky. They set up tons of crystals, fog machines, dark shots, and endless camera tricks to make this world as alien as possible, which worked wondrously. The Twilight Zone made it look like Dimension X, and it's no doubt why the child's been terrified all episode. I wish we got more of this throughout, otherwise it would have won a high score easily. This place looks expensive. I feel like I'm wasting a fortune just standing here. 
Mr. Miller eventually lures his lost little girl back, and her little dog too, where he pulls them out just in time, saving the day. <laughs> Our twist ending is slightly downplayed, since Richard Matheson sought a happy ending. Bill reveals that he was holding on to Mr. Miller's legs the whole time, and was rushing them to get out, because the portal was sealing up. And one second late, he would have been sliced in half. That's why. It was closing up all the time you were in there. Yep, they all almost died, but made it out nick of time. Which is... eh, kinda scary? I think it would have been creepier if he knew there was a final countdown the whole time, yet dared venture in anyway, rather than ending on it. But that's just my opinion. This episode's okay. It has mind-blowing effects and a marvelous style, yet the plot's sadly nothing to brag about, because of how simple it is. And the exposition goes on a bit too long. This is an episode which I value more so as a technical masterpiece, rather than a must-watch epic. I believe what fans adore the most about it is the concept itself of dimensional realms and the gorgeous effects bringing it to life. Those are whimsical feats, but the story itself meanders a lot, and the dramatic timing feels off. However, its pure imagination totally scores enough points for me to say that it's still a fun one overall, and contains quaint Twilight Zone moments that you'll truly remember. So, I grant this science experiment a silver skull. It's alright. I liked it, but I didn't love it. Mostly due to how it's been outclassed by bigger sci-fis, even in the zone. Though I will recommend it because it's still worthy of this series. Little Girl Lost might not be an A-plus title for most fans, but it remains a unique entry you'll really want to find. Huh? That's weird. It's like something out of that Twilighty show about that zone. The Twilight Zone.